As you know, I do enjoy an early start, and this morning the alarm went off at 4 o'clock in the morning. But both myself and my walking companion for the day both jump out of bed, eager to get out on our adventure. And we headed off and arrived at the, the parking bay for the start of the walk at around the back of six. And the early start had many advantages, including one which is a slightly unusual, but you'll have to wait till the end of the video to see what that is. Anyway, we were soon walking with blue skies above and before long we hit the ridge line and started to climb upwards. And this ridge line would take us all the way to the summit of the mountain. Well, what a beautiful morning. Absolutely glorious. And we are halfway, halfway through May. I tell you what, it's still not warm. It's a lovely morning. I think we'll get warmer in the sun, but the car thermometer was showing uh, it was hovering just above freezing as we, as we started off. So, yeah, that's actually quite nice because sometimes if it's too warm, yeah, I'd be in my t shirt and sweating away and need two gallons of uh, water. Anyway, we're in the Arakar Alps and I'm here with my son and we're on a really, really nice mountain which is uh, it's a wee favourite of mine and it's a wee favourite of Jerry's as well but he can't make it today he's probably still in his bed about a mile that way <laughs> anyway, we're going to stop here have a wee drink and uh, yeah, we'll report back in a wee while right. Stopping for our first wee break of the day it was just lovely the early morning light was filtering through the Arica Alps and just casting shadows across the landscape. It really was paying so much reward getting up early. And before long, we were heading out of the shade and into the sunshine as we headed further up this mountain. And there's a lovely path, well, when I say lovely path, there's a path which follows the ridge line all the way up and that's always quite nice to have so you don't have to worry too much about the navigation providing there's no snow on the ground and you can see the path under your feet Well, what a morning, it's absolutely gorgeous, really nice views There's a wee bit of a breeze and I'm just on the right side of, uh, of warm I think if I stop here much longer I'm going to get my jack on and uh, I think if I get to the top here and it stays clear, I've been up this hill maybe, I don't know, five or six times. And I kid you not, I've never had a view <laughs> from the top. And Jerry told me there's a fantastic view in all directions, or fantastic views in all directions from the summit. So uh, I'm really looking forward to hopefully getting up there and hopefully getting a view. And the other thing I was going to say is I might put this out as a Sunday vlog. Um, I wouldn't say it's an ideal hill for beginners, but it's certainly got a path all the way up it. It's a shortish outing. It's an ideal day for a half day or a shout out short outing, but uh, I get a lot of queries from from a lot of you, especially those of you who are new to hill walking about uh, recommending hills if you're just starting out. So this might be one of them, but I'll create a playlist and put it in the description of some of the easier Monroes and uh, easier hills. But uh, in terms of uh, in terms of views, this is certainly well worth the effort. So I'm going to sit here for a bit longer, have a have a wee drink and a bite to eat, and then we'll get cracked on uh, up the steep part. There was absolutely no rush today, we were nice and early and the sun was shining and the route, as I said, was relatively short so we just took our time and ambled up and this uh, this rock face ahead of us kind of blocks the summit and you have to negotiate this uh, to, the, to the right of those bands and it gets quite steep here so we, we headed up here a wee bit before deciding to have another wee break and soak in the rays of the morning sun. Oh, right, we're at the uh, steepest part of the climb. It cuts diagonally across, and although I was saying this was quite a, an easy hill, it's not it's not too far to walk. It, you do have to be careful. Any of these um, mountains or hills that I put in the playlist <laughs> I was talking about earlier on are only easy in summer condition. I can't remember who said it. It was maybe Cameron McNeish said, there's no such thing as hill walking in winter, it's mountaineering. And this, this part of the walk here, 
is a prime example of it. It's a nice path up here at the moment, but if this is all banked out with snow, it can be a bit gnarly. So uh, yeah, just bear that in mind. If you're coming up here thinking it's gonna be an easy walk, if it's in the winter or if there's any snow cover, just beware. This bit can be, there's a, there's a long run out and if you don't have ice axe and crampons, you, you've gotta be careful. So anyway, we're still here. We're gonna, get, gonna have a second breakfast. And uh, yeah, what a place to, to have it. The, the views over to the Arakar Alps or the other Arakar Alps, Ben Eam, and I can see the cobbler. It's just fantastic. So we'll stop here for a bit before the final push to the summit. So we had our second breakfast and started to head off and the route up here is just lovely. The path is just cuts along an exposed hillside and it's just fantastic views in, in all directions. Anyway, there was a bit of hard work to do to head up this steepening before it levels off and then after this point there's one final steep pull up a really nice part of the ridge to get to the summit. Ooh. What a spectacular! <laughs> what a place! Wow! Hopefully you can see me okay, but wow! If you can see what I can see, I can see right down to the walk and just that the rest to be thankful. And behind me, over my left shoulder, that's the top, that's where we're going. And this is the last pull up, and then it's looking like we're going to get a clear summit. Um, we'd be really unlucky for this cloud to lower. But what a spectacular place! Bang for buck, this is certainly well up there. <laughs> it's absolutely fantastic. These views down here and over to the Monroes of the Arica Alps and as always the cobbler steals the show. Looking looking fascinating. So uh, yeah, we're nearly there. Just a wee bit more of a one last steep pool and we'll reach the summit and then we'll report back from the summit with uh, with hopefully some summit views. Right, let's go. The final ascent up to the top that you can see here is just absolutely fantastic and for me it's the highlight of the walk. As the path winds its way up the mountain on the ridge you get some really nice sort of gnarly bits of rock that stick out and as you can see from here you can see right, right down to Loch Restel which, uh, which gives the mountain its name which means Mountain of the Little Loch and it's just a fantastic viewpoint. It's really worth just taking your time, enjoying those views and not rushing to the summit. After a little bit more climbing we were soon taking our final footsteps to the summit where there's a small cairn. You know what, Jerry was spot on. The views from here were just absolutely marvellous and I was so glad that I could experience them after about six or seven attempts of climbing this in the clag. What a place to be. Wow, what a place. I don't know if you can make it out but uh, I've got the camera just in the summit. My son's just up there having a, a bite to eat. The time is now half past eight, nice and early. And uh, yeah, this is the, the, this is a hill called Ben and Lochin, and it sits just over 900 meters. And it used to be, it was actually, when I say it used to be, it was it was originally classified as a Munro in Sir Hugh Munro's original listings before they uh, remeasured it and found out that it was uh, yeah, quite a few feet underneath that. 3,000 foot contour line, but I tell you what, it's no less of a mountain, I tell you. It's just fantastic. It's a really lovely ridge all the way up. You can come up straight up from the rest and be thankful, but um, we decided just to come up the ridge. We might go back down that way, but to be honest with you, I don't really fancy a road walk down to the car. Anyway, we're going to sit up here, enjoy the morning views, and uh, 
perhaps we'll, perhaps we'll make it back down again <laughs> if you watched the video the last time we were out for the breakfast menu at McDonald's down at Balmaha <laughs> who knows but what a place, fantastic the summit of Bena and Loken certainly commands some amazing views so I, I took some time in the summit to stop and get the camera out to take some pictures it was lovely After taking a few snaps it was time to head off the summit and we'd had a great trip. The, the, the whole thing probably took us about four hours but if you're, yeah, if you're relatively fit you could probably do it in less time than that or you could do it in a longer time taking your time and taking pictures. It's a fantastic place to loiter and because it's not too long distance wise and you're not ascending as much as some of the bigger Monroes it's, it's a relatively good one if you're, uh, want, if you're short in time let's say and you just want a half day it's a fantastic fantastic wee hill and if you're if you're okay with some easy scrambling and some deep steps it's a pretty good one to, to start off on not too bad at all anyway we were soon heading back down and uh, off the ridge heading back to the car and all that was left now was to see if we could make it to that wee restaurant down at the bottom of Loch Lomond. Yeah.